astronauts, it's me, Brandy, and welcome back to Astro Tarot Research. So today's pick a card is why are you so sexy? We have five pals to choose from, but before we get started, I do want to remind you to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at astro underscore tarot research and hit that bell to stay notified of future readings. So let us jump into these piles. We have pile number one, pile number two, pile number three, pile number four, and pile number five. So let's not waste any more time. Sit back, relax, and choose. Hey, pile number one. Let's get started on Why Are You Sexy? We have the Page of Pentacles. We have the Sun. We have the Four of Cups. We have Judgment. We have the Eight of Swords. And we have the Third House Messages. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so with the Page of Pentacles coming up first, we already know that whatever brings out your sexiness has a lot to do with how you present yourself. Page of Pentacles is usually trying out something new or different. So maybe you're somebody who plays around with their style. You could be somebody who switches up their hair a lot. Um, it can also have a lot to do with certain interests like music, art, and etc. So having like a, a passion for your interest or what you, I guess, you don't have to really work on it. It could be something doing your, do you do during your leisure time and just having your leisurely time and just having that passion for it will really kind of amplify that sexiness. A lot of people are inspired by somebody who feels passionate about something, but I think it really does have to do with a certain way that you present yourself more. I often get page up pinnacles to represent like, it's usually something new, um, unless it's reversed, but it's usually like, oh, I did my hair different. I got some new glasses. I bought this shirt. I bought this dress. Like, how you really um, decorate yourself is really bringing out the sexiness. And then also with the Page of Pentacles, we do have a sense of youthfulness. So it could be that you can be trendy as well because youthful people tend to, or younger people, tend to be focused a little bit more on trends. Not that older people don't as well, but usually it's a, usually a, a younger sort of uh, mentality. So it could possibly be that you dress in a trendy way and that really does amplify the sexiness that you have. We also have the sun and I usually get the sun to represent somebody who has just a very magnetic sexuality. So I'm currently doing this study on um, black beauty and women and um, particularly, I'll probably do men next. And one of the placements that was very, very popular, I think it might be one of the most popular placements I haven't like finished yet, but so far it's one of the most popular placements is sun ruled placements in terms of attractiveness. And what brings about the attractiveness in these uh, beautiful women is obviously their sense of sexuality and not only just like face, body, um, taking care of themselves. It's a strong focus on health and vitality. So you probably just really look very health. You look very healthy. You look very youthful. It's emphasizing with the sun. You know, the sun card has children on it. So you look very healthy. You look very youthful and you don't hide from your sexuality. That's one thing these women have in common. They weren't, uh, shy about showing off like their figures. They weren't shy about presenting their, they just weren't shy about presenting their sexuality to the world. They, you know, they let people know they're a sexual being. They weren't very um, conservative or demure. And they really emphasized um, their ability to express themselves in a seductive manner, okay? So just being able to put themselves out there and being very forward. Like a lot of these women were very forward and about who they would pursue. It's very, it's very much like traits you would particularly associate with men because a lot of sun ruled women that I've seen just in general, not just black women, would take on the role where they don't mind like pursuing a guy. They don't mind being like, oh, hey, I'm interested or even just like, um, going up to them and start talking or start flirting, like 
versus more subtle tactics like making eye contact, you know, walking by, giving a look. That's a little bit more subtle. Sun placements is not subtle. I mean, think about the sun. It's the brightest thing ever. So being less subtle is part of the, the sexiness and the sex appeal, especially if you're a woman. A guy, too, as well. Guys, I've seen some of guys focus a little bit more on... It's either they focus more on looks or their personality is so magnetic and so kind of like this white knight prince charming side of personality where they're like oh i'm here to serve you oh i'm like this person in some cases it can be very manipulative because they might pretend to be someone they're not but in other cases they kind of show you that like hey i'm just there to listen to your problems i'm here to help you um have a you know good time i'm here to um if you need anything I, i'll be of service to you. It's kind of like that sort of seduction where you put in a lot of effort towards someone. Like I'm giving you this, and sun sun ruled women do the same thing. Where like I'm giving you this, I'm caring for you in this way, I'm paying attention to you. It's just a very strong focus on someone. So that's part of your uh, sex appeal to people, where they feel like when you're really interested, you have this really. Uh, direct focus on them and then we have the four of cups energy here so this lets me know that like if somebody is not reciprocating what it is that you're putting out there then you're going to you know pull back obviously and you're going to kind of just say, hey, you know what? I got other options. You're not interested. Um, I'm going to, uh, you know, pay attention to someone else or, you know, go in my own space. You know what I mean? Or it could possibly be something like you give somebody their full energy and then you can kind of pull away. There's, there's two options here. So one, the first option, you give somebody your full energy and time and attention and then if they're not interested, you're like, okay, whatever, I'm I'm just going to move on. And then the other cases, if you give them your time and attention, and you're just like, you know what, I'm going to just pull away. Because people have, some people have that ad, avoidant personality thing going on, um, just based off childhood and whatever. And that sense of pulling away, or even just kind of showing disinterest after you've given them their, like, attention, they're like, wait, where did that go? Like, where did that person's presence go? Like, um... Where did that admiration go? Where did the 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 the, um, the sexy looks come go? Where did the flirtation go? So even just kind of being more reclusive after you kind of I don't know put the moves on someone. I don't know how else to put that. Then that kind of draws people's attention into you more. I don't know if that's toxic or not, but that's what the cards are saying. Um, they're saying that like once you kind of pull away, people just suddenly become like way more interested and just really magnifies your sex appeal. Like they really even notice you even more. And then we have judgment. Okay, and the fact that we have not judgment, which is connected to Pluto and the sun here in the same reading, reading it's interesting because I was studying um, placements of people who had sun conjunct Pluto, and man, let me tell you how the sexuality was so forefront. I mean, it was, it was blatantly, blatantly flirtatious, blatantly like you know, come over to my place tonight. Um, a lot of people were into like exhibitionism, like flashing, showing themselves. It's just basically that your sexuality is so, I don't know, blatant. <laughs> that, I mean, you're just like traditionally a sexy person. That's what people are just getting from you. Um, you know, the, the wardrobe, the hair, the swagger, the style, where you talk, the way you move. A lot of sun ruled men particularly have like deeper voices. So if you're a guy, that could be something um, about the way you talk. Sun ruled women, not so much. I don't think they don't really have deeper voices. They don't have high pitched voices though. I don't see too many sun ruled women having high pitched voices. But, um, it's just the way that you um, move and talk to people. It's so blatant and so flirtatious that people will like it. Or even if it's just like you're not personally flirtatious and putting yourself out there yourself, you may dress in a way that really entices people. 
that's something that's very, very important and coming up here. And then we have the Eight of Swords, which is so interesting because with these combination of cards, I've seen like people just kind of outright say certain things um, <laughs> to, you know, get people's attention, make certain like sexual innuendos and jokes like that and joke in a sexual manner. But with the Eight of Swords, it's funny because they, they I feel like it's the combination. I feel like the cards are saying the same thing over and over again. Like they're saying like how you can go from being like this kind of like spicy personality to being a little bit more reserved that people are like, what? I don't, I don't understand what's going on here. So it's really about the way that you communicate, which I guess that's why we got third house messages. That kind of makes sense. It kind of goes together. I mean, it definitely goes together, not kind of, um, it definitely goes together because the way you communicate where if you come on like very flirtatious and then pull back and like, oh my gosh, I'm so shy, I can't believe I said that, I can't believe I did that, I can't believe I put on that outfit and then walk by, I can't believe I, you know, did this, this, that, and that, whatever. Um, then, and then going from that to like a more shy reserve state is part of the sex appeal and why people just find you very sexy or very attractive in that manner. Third house messages is obviously you're charming people with the way that you speak to them, the, the way you communicate with them, the way you listen, um, the things that you talk about, like I said, the passions that you share, um, showing that excitement, coming again with new ideas, offering help because page of pinnacles or pinnacles specifically have to do with sort of like practical skill, practical helps, practical needs, um, showing generosity, these things are really part of what make you very um, sexually appealing. And then the third house is the house of efforts. So it kind of goes back to what I was saying about the, the sun placements, where you, if you put in a lot of, even just not even effort towards someone, but effort towards yourself, whether that's like, oh, I have a certain diet, I dress a certain way, I put on a certain fragrance, um, I have certain, um, I don't know, routine for like my skin, I, I have certain like beard oil, whatever. I go to the barbershop, I go to the hairdresser. Like putting that effort into yourself and taking pride within yourself and your own appearance is part of the sex appeal here as well. And then I also get the sun rule placement because this is another combination. It's the first thing I thought of when I saw these cards is that people will also find you sexually appealing because a lot of other people are interested as well. Pluto is a very like, with the judgment card here is very magnetic energy and it draws people in the same with the sun the combination of the two really kind of just like excites people because they're like oh there's a little bit of a mystery there there's a little bit of you know sensuality to it there's a little bit of like um maybe a hint of danger or something like that so draw so being able to draw a lot of other people and people are like okay what's up with this person this person seems to um, garner a lot of attention or have a lot of people interested in them. So now I'm interested in what it is that's so, you know, great and special about this person. And then you're just like, okay, I may not, like, you're not going to pay attention to everyone. So the people that you're not paying attention to, they're like, for some reason it draws them in even more, like being ignored. I don't know why <laughs> that is, but, um, the fact that you're not paying attention to certain people and and you're not paying attention to um, everyone is part of the excitement because they're like they feel like when you get when they get your attention that they feel um, I don't know the proper word for it they feel that strong desire they're like oh I got with this kind of special person this person is um, top notch so I've garnered I've garnered their attention okay. Um, so that is one of the reasons and part of the sexual appeal too. I mean, it is a thing. People do tend to like feel like they want to go after people because they are in a position where they have a lot of power or where a lot of people desire them. That's why people kind of go after, um, you know, celebrities or people with status because they're like, oh man, I'm dating this person. They have this status. So that can be, that's a part of a reason that people will go for you because they're like oh you're you're really good looking so and a lot of people want you so i really really find that attractive because a lot of people are attracted to um power and um being able to be seen and validated so that's part of the reason and um that's really uh 
everything that I can pull for this reading at the moment. So thank you for watching pal number one and I'll see you next time. Au revoir. Hey pal number two, let's see what makes you so sexy. We have the page of swords. We have the queen of wands. We have the magician. We have the six of wands. We have the four of wands and we have Saturn truth. So a lot of wand energy. So people definitely like that fiery animated personality of yours if you don't have that then you might just be kind of like more playful more like a jokester because i do get fire energy for people who can be quite very humorous um very kind of they're just funny like that so i mean what how else do i need to say that they're funny so people will definitely like that you're funny page of swords 100 percent they're, they're liking the youthful spirit as well as you may have some sharp features. I also get sores to represent skills with kind of like makeup or hair or nails, uh, etc. Like that, that's 100% I get swords for that. Just somebody who has a way of presenting themselves in a unique way that really helps them stand out in a crowd, which I guess that's why we have the six of wands here you know that card is all about standing out in a crowd so that becomes part of the sexual um sexuality and why people find you sexy you stand out in a crowd you look unique you look young but they also sense that sense of maturity about you because the queen of wands is someone who is somebody who has a lot of responsibilities so they take care of business but then they also look good doing it okay it's giving me very like legally blonde energy very much Oh my gosh, why did I just blank on this wonderful human being? Hold on, let me get this person's name right. Very much Shikari Richardson, you know, the track uh, field star and how she still had her hair done, her nails done, and she still won, you know, looking good doing it. So that's that Queen of Wands energy, being able to succeed in the area that you wish to succeed in as well as looking good doing it so people are really like impressed by that and they're really drawn into that part of your sexual appeal because they're like wow this is a total boss guy girl you know him she they it doesn't matter they're just like this person is able to create that balance between being able to um, present themselves in a way that's very appealing as well as get the job done. So that's something that people find attractive about you, especially when we have mercurial energy here with the magician and the magician is all about using everything that you have within you to get the job done. So there's a really strong emphasis on your skill set. I'm really not sure why, but that really does become part of your sexual appeal. Maybe they're like looking at you as a girl or a guy and they're like, oh, you're good with your hands in whatever way. Um, and they see that and they're like, oh, I bet this person can do blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to get into details in that way, you know. <laughs> um, but they, they, they see that and they're, they, feel like you're someone who may know their way around um another person <laughs> so and in that way basically so part of the uniqueness part of the being good with your hands part of being able to take on um whatever it is that you need to accomplish that sense of courageousness that they see within you as well as just generally being someone who is highly sought after with this six of wands energy somebody who is celebrated somebody who is charismatic like these are all the things that are attributing to your sexiness and being able to really have a lot of people get along with you and being very encouraging of other people there's a really strong emphasis on the personality especially when we have the planet saturn here now the planet saturn here can be a very like very sexual planet which people don't normally associate saturn with being a very sexual planet but it is and it's also a planet of you know the usual hard work discipline having a sense of maturity as well as being able to treat everyone fairly and equally so it's the way that you treat people around you with a general respect as well as being able to have that very joking manner personality saturn is a planet that 
a lot of people will attribute to like very hardships and a seriousness and growing and kind of like going through this very dark period and you know Saturn returned is like so feared and everything um, like that but Saturn if you really look at people who have strong Saturnian placements like Sun conjunct Saturn, Sun conjunct Moon, Saturn in the Ascendant or having Saturn rule one of your Ascendant rulers ruler, moon, or sun, in, ter in terms of Nuxatras, which is a Vedic tool, because Saturn rules certain placements, certain degree placements. If you really have that strong emphasis in your chart, then you know that you can also have this very humorous and goofy side to you. That's why we have the saying that, um, oh God, I don't even know if this is a saying, but basically, misery is comedy. So, there's a reason that Saturnian people or people who have strong Saturnian placements will be very humorous. And as I said before, it's just kind of reiterating the same thing in different ways with this reading. We have the wands representing humor. We have Saturn representing humor. A strong focus on your personality. We have a very youthful appearance thing going on here with the emphasis on the sword energy and the magician mercurial obviously represents rejuven i mean the magician obviously represents rejuvenation and being recycled and staying current that's why we have these infinity symbol over the head you know as well as there is a spiritual connection but that's for later it also represents the ability to have absolute creative power over your domain and it was interesting how I was studying like different characters and TV shows and movies and stuff like people who were cast a lot in the position of God like people who play God and stuff like that and there was one particular placement it was um, Revati which is a mercurial placement and the reason that they were usually cast the most in this godlike manner is because of mercurial's ability to have con creative control over their domain they don't particularly prescribe to the rules and the boundaries of society they in a way will create their own structures or what it is to be human man woman they look at the world like often like they have full creative control over what it is that they want to accomplish they that they themselves are someone who is endless and boundless in their possibilities and this can also stretch into the realm of morality which is sometimes why mercurial people are seen as like kind of mean or cruel <laughs> because they don't um, always subscribe to the moralities that have been set in place and structured by society so that's another thing that's there. So another thing does come in mind where you could have a sharp tongue and that could be part of it. And you could say things that are witty or kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Like more like banter, make fun of, poke fun of, um, be, a, be a little bit more saucy in your responses. Like you're not super, super nice all the time. And that can be very much appealing to people. A lot of people I've noticed do tend to like having those like jabs at each other, or like kind of going back and further back and forth. And obviously with these cards, it's more of a playful thing, but people will like that about you and think that's very, um, that's a more of a, a sexy thing you do. Another thing that becomes important with these two emphasis on the very sword air like mercurial energy is that we do get something about the way you speak can be very appealing to people and it could be a particular dialect or accent or maybe you just have a certain influctuation in your voice. I've noticed a lot of mercurial people um, will be imitated. Usually moon rule people and mercury rule people are the most kind of like imitated and it's because they have a particular way of speaking that really kind of catches people's attention. 
I've seen certain mercurial people have accents or maybe they'll like roll their R's or maybe they'll talk like this. Like it's like they'll do certain things with their voices and how they decide to talk that really becomes very distinctive. So there's something about the way you speak that's very distinctive to people and that's very um, enticing for people to listen to. Another thing that we have here is we have your ability to really connect to people in a compassionate manner and to open yourself up to being very encouraging to people and I think people feel like in a way you're like their cheerleader or you're like somebody who really wants them to succeed as well as you want to succeed yourself. So having those high ambitions and having that strong belief in other people becomes very enticing. Now, if we're talking about like physical appearance, I mean, Juan's energy can be so flexible and diverse, but the main thing that I have noticed in terms of wands is if we're talking about people who are like very fit and in shape, they prefer kind of like cardio. So having a more like, these cards would kind of indicate a petite frame, but obviously not everyone's petite. But it also emphasizes having a more sultry look, um, less big eyes, if that makes sense, and more like maybe cat almond shaped, or even if your eyes aren't cat almond shaped, then your eyes aren't usually as big with this combination of cards. This can also emphasize somebody, because it's not really long or short hair, that could really go either way with these placements. Though I have seen more pixie cuts with like mercurial placements and sometimes Saturnian placements, but it's more merc mercurial that would do a pixie cut. Um, I'm trying to think in terms of like anything particular it's 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 hard to say because like I said it's really about having complete creative control so their looks are kind of more flexible which is why when you call somebody mercurial you know they're kind of like bendable and they're they are they're hard to put your finger on you know all the the mercurial signs especially like Gemini is known for being two-faced switching things so that's why I said it's hard to describe the specific look so they may even just like that you're a little bit more changeable a little bit hard to pinpoint in terms of a specific style or look one thing I say will notice is that they tend to be like very like pixie fairy like for women men god what a Men are different. Men can look very, they're not traditionally like usually sexy. Is that, do I want to say that? They're not like, um, they're not like someone you would traditionally be like based off of looks alone. Um, you would gravitate towards. It's mainly the fact that they can hold very strong intellectual conversations about literally anything and they can talk to anyone. Um, yeah, they talk. Like, they can talk to anyone about anything and that really becomes appealing because if you've noticed, there's an emphasis in our society for men not to be as verbose but mercurial men, like if you want to talk to them about hair and makeup, they could talk to you about hair and makeup. If you want to talk to them about football and sports, they could talk to you about football and sports. They have a vast knowledge and they tend to like read a lot or consume a lot of information and write a lot. And so that becomes part of the sexual appeal. And that can be for women as well. It just reminds me of Johnny Depp and Winona Ryder who both have mercurial placement and the reason that they got together is because they had so many shared interests and in books, movies, you know, shows and they had this very particular way of like diving deep into like their favorite films and all of that so that analytical ability and that ability to talk about um, pop culture or even just media in a way that is deep and focused 
becomes part of the sexual appeal because then they're like, okay, I can talk to this person for days and they have a vast knowledge and they can let me know things and they have tons of background information on this, that, and other, okay? So that's something that becomes very um, enticing. Having strong communication with people is something that people will like. And then not only that, but they like that you're honest. You know, even if it doesn't always come out uh, the way you intend it, like they don't feel like you're trying to be, you know, harsh or cruel. They kind of feel like, okay, this person is trying to just communicate their honest thoughts to me. So they really like that sense of honesty that they get from you. So that is what I have for you, pal number two. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I'll see you next time. Au revoir. Hey, pal number three. Let's see why you're so sexy. Okay, we have the Tower, we have the Lovers, we have the Knight of Pentacles, we have the Empress, we have the Temperance card, and we have Cancer I Feel. Okay, so 100% you're coming with the raw emotions and just being very upfront about um, either maybe how you feel, how you think. Um, or who you are as a person and people will like that confidence within you or at least they'll like that you f can put yourself out there in that way and that can be a very attractive thing when somebody sort of just puts their personality thoughts feelings or vulnerabilities uh, out there um, just because you know it allows people to connect to you and it, it, it allows people to see you more as brave. I mean, some people who may have a more toxic mindset may view it as weakness, but it is a brave thing to do to really just put your feelings out there. And people will find that very attractive that you're so open in that manner, as well as you come off very honest. And it just has this very shocking effect. The tower I get sometimes when people are very tall as well in terms of physical stature, but in terms of appearance, this can create a quite intimidating appearance. So uh, that might be a sort of attractive thing for some people where that you come off sort of like um, you would bite someone's head off or if you have like um, kind of like a resting mean type of face. That's something that people seem to be drawn in by. The lovers, on the other hand, is an interesting thing because in terms of sexual appeal, obviously, maybe you just look like you'd be a great lover. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but the, generally, the lovers, you have two sort of naked um, people, a man and a woman, and I guess what this is saying is the sexual appeal relies a lot in your physical body um, itself. So maybe the way you're shaped um, is a very attractive thing. Maybe you have a, a nice body. Maybe you're somebody who is just somebody who just looks good naked or whatever. You know what I mean? Like that's just a thing that's just kind of like drawing people in. As well as the lovers can represent on a less physical level somebody who is willing to share their beliefs as well as to listen to the beliefs of others. Which is why the lovers are connected to Gemini, which is about communication. Because, you know, all love is is a dialogue, right? It's just you communicating with another person. If you don't have that communication, you don't have that love, right? So the way you communicate with people brings a very seductive feel to it and it's just so raw and um, shocking that it really entices people because it's like, whoa, like where did this come from? And it's exciting because it feels new. Um, that's the flavor that, of the week that you're given. And it feels new, it feels refreshing to people. And with the Knight of Pentacles, I usually get this card for somebody who is very particular about their physical appearance, whether it's, you know, if they're somebody, let's say they were getting their hair done and they want their, um, let's say they were trying to get like a, a lace front done and they want that lace front to be laid and slayed, like no lace showing, no hair out of place, um, everything just 
to the nines, okay? So that's something that would be very much so, I guess, not I guess, I know it's very much so it'll draw people in that you seem like you really, really are very, very particular about how you look. Like you want to be very neat, very presentable. Like the Knight of Pentacles is the ultimate perfectionist. So people think that you may have some perfectionist qualities. Now it doesn't have to be all of you. Maybe you're somebody who's just like, well, I need all my shirts to be ironed, okay? I need them all to be like wrinkle-free whenever I go out. So maybe one thing that's particular. Or it's like, oh, I need my um, skin to be glowing when I go out. I don't, I don't know. It could be any small thing. Or I need my shoes to be like fresh, no scuff marks, no nothing on them. Like that's something that's bringing about the appeal because the Knight of Pentacles can be very... OCD are very like clean, cleaned, like you know what I mean? Like they're like, I need everything very clean, very in place, very neat. So having that attribute to you, having something that you pay close attention to when it comes to your physicality, that's really drawing in people to you and your sex appeal in a way, okay? So people like the cleanliness, they like the, the particular focus on being neat and presentable. They like the focus on um, taking the time to, you know, make sure there's no dirt on your fingernail. You just look very pristine, okay? So that's the word that's coming here. I would say maybe some of you clicked on this and you're like, oh, I'm not pristine and I'm more relaxed, I'm more this and that. That would be very interesting because this reading doesn't read that way, okay? These cards aren't like relaxed energy besides temperance um, and maybe the empress, but the empress I always get when it's like, oh, I want somebody to be comfortable, but she's never sloppy, okay? So I would be very much shocked if somebody who chose this pal presents themselves in a very sloppy manner or a manner that's just very disheveled. That's really not what these cards are saying. So if, if that's you, probably pick another pile, okay? <laughs> but anyway, as I was saying, what shines through is 100% um, your femininity, your ability to just be beautiful. Like people are very attracted. It they're, The main thing that catches people, especially when it comes to the sexuality, is because it's just so different from anything they have experienced. It's the way you say things. Like maybe you make a lot of sexual jokes or maybe you're just very much a person who is likes to have more open discussions about sexuality. Um, that's something that could be a thing that's drawing people in in terms of your general, like why people find you sexy in a way. And... Um, Not only that, but when I get the tower, I get like a sense of fierceness and a sense of urgency. Not like desperation, but it's like, oh, I, I need to um, hug this person now. I need to kiss this person now. I need to be around this person now, okay? So people will like that about you. Like you're not like, oh, let me waste time. Let me be all casual. Let me um, start fronting. Let me pretend like I don't care. Like, no, this is like now. Like the energy is like very hot and fiery and fast. So that becomes part of um, general sex appeal as well. Obviously, the Empress is going to represent somebody who's just a beautiful person in general. So people just find you to be very beautiful. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. You're just a beautiful or handsome, attractive person. As well as I get the Empress to represent somebody who can just generally be very happy and content with where they are in life. And so part of why you're sexy could also have to do with the fact that people just perceive you to be a very happy or content and peaceful person. And that's appealing to other people. They're like, oh, I want that peace. I want that contentment. I want that happiness. I want that relaxation, which goes in line with temperance as well. And then cancer is kind of what I was saying before, where you had the emotions just be so raw and so out there and just unfiltered energy and vulnerability and just being open about who you are as a person and maybe the things that have hurt you. And people are really able to connect 
to you on that level. That's why we have the lover's card here. People are really connecting to um, the things that you've gone through and they feel like maybe they've gone through something similar or they can just relate to you in some way or they can at least relate to the emotions that you felt or that you ha are feeling, okay? And then sometimes we get the tower to represent rage and anger. And you know how some people are like, oh, you're, you're, um, you're sexy when you're mad or something like that. So you, people just may think that, that you look attractive mad or something. I've definitely seen people say that. Um, it's not my thing, but you know, to each their own. And <laughs> that's something that people will like. I don't know. Maybe you, you just look very attractive mad. I don't, I don't know what that is, but that's a thing. Um, that is quite, quite possible when we have this combination of cards here. And then the Empress definitely brings about a sense of maturity to you. And the Empress kind of represents, I'm trying to think, like, because it's, it's represented by Venus. And I'm trying to see, Venusian people, I've seen their appeal... It's hard to say. I'm not like they're generally just very cute, very beautiful, and I think the appeal from what I've seen overall lies in the sensuality, the sort of long game of like a slow type of seduction if that makes sense, like flirtatious glances, um you know, brushing someone's hand as they walk by, um, trying to think of other things. Being, it's different for guys. Guys can be more aggressive with this place, with Venusian placements. Um, being more like, oh, let me take you to this beautiful restaurant, um, wherever you want to go, I'll pay for it. Like, it's just, it's more, more, personal in a way but like fun god how do i explain that you know i get a lot of venusian people um especially guys to be like like they're kind of represented in the media as like stoners so there there's this very laid back energy um which is interesting because with the tower here, we have that sense of need and urgency. But then when we have the Venusian thing, it's kind of like, okay, so once you're together or once you're hanging out, everything's kind of like more slow, more relaxed, more scenic, very clean, very beautiful, very like, let's look at nature, maybe let's dance. Like, it's just uh, uh, the full romantic experience. Like, people feel like if they were to date you or if they're dating you, that they get this almost picturesque romance, okay? So the appeal lies in the fact that they feel very relaxed and at peace and balanced and they feel like this is you know what i pictured when i see um being in a relationship being in love um having those connections having those feelings i don't know if i perfectly described the venusian um energy but i did the best i could like i'm picturing it in my mind like just different um venusian people and the situations that they have undergone in terms of romance. And it is that very, very casual, but intimate interaction. Okay. So that's what I, that's, I don't know how else to explain that. I, the only way you can explain it is to, to see it and to feel it. So maybe that's what I need to just say. Like, they just feel like, um, there's no way to sort of fully capture your sexuality other than to feel it and to be in your presence. And something about forming that bond and connection really heightens that sexual 
attraction um, towards you. So that's what I have for you, pile number three. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Astronauts Cortez Research. I'll see you next time. Au revoir. Okay, pal number four. Let's see why you are sexy. Why are you so sexy? We have the Ace of Cups. We have the Emperor. We have the <clears throat> Nine of Cups. We have the King of Wands. I'm going to reverse that a little bit. We have the Two of Cups. And we have the Tenth House. All right. Interesting. So, first off, off the bat, when we have the Ace of Cups, one thing that makes you sexy, we usually get the Ace of Cups and Cups in general to just represent somebody who is just a very natural, beautiful face. So there's something about your face that's very enchanting. Could be your lips, could be your eyes, could be your nose. It doesn't matter. It's just overall your face is very pleasant to people and very welcoming and very comforting. So people just think you have a beautiful face um, in general. As well as the emperor when it comes to sex appeal. Emperor is just pretty much classic sort of sexual energy. It is connected to the planet Mars and in older readings or older cases with the tarot Jupiter, but we're going to read it as connected to Mars. And when we get this here, this Mars-like energy, that means the body is usually very curvy or at least it's very, it's seen in a more sexy, like voluptuous manner. Even if that's not you, let's say you're just a skinny mini, um, <laughs> or maybe you're a person who's just not as curvy or something like that. Well, then this would sort of indicate that you just have a very powerful presence, okay? Just like how the empress, emperor does, okay? You would notice if uh, somebody who was like an emperor came into the room or um, a king or a queen or something like that. That's not like a normal average everyday event. So something about your presence is just very powerful and exudes sexuality. And that's really what's making you very sexy is just how you carry yourself in a way. You may come off very regal. You may come off like you, you know, know how to dress, how to adorn yourself. You can be somebody who just exudes confidence or people just feel like you're very confident. Another thing about this Ace of Cups and the Emperor combination is it can create somebody who is very much so charismatic, like they know how to command the room or they know how to talk to people. They come off very confident or they don't seem like they're a shy person. So that's something that can be very engaging for people. The fact that you kind of just kind of go into conversations, even if you, maybe you're somebody with social anxiety or something like that, people don't seem to notice that. They feel like you are really great at navigating those uh, social situations. And especially when I get the Ace of Cups, this does represent an element of vulnerability or at least emotional truth or emotional honesty with someone. It's, it's really about having a, a lot of feelings and feeling a strong sense of either empathy for someone or just being a very highly emotional person. Um, I always get this combination of Ace of Cups and the Emperor to be somebody who can be a little bit feisty because the Emperor energy can, like I said, it represents Mars energy. So I've gotten this card to represent arguments. Um, I doubt somebody thinks you being argumentative is um, attractive, but it, what it's trying to say is it. they like that you express your passion. That's the emotion that people really are drawn into you for in terms of being like just very sexy okay they like that you're expressing things that you feel passionate about um and that you have strong emotions towards maybe the people that you care about you don't seem very like nonchalant or passive you're like all in there you know how gordon ramsay is always kind of like yelling at people he has a marginal placement it's really obvious i mean <laughs> the fact that he's always yelling at people i think he has like mega share rising or something like that um, but you see how he he does all that and he behaves in a way where he comes off as like a jerk, but he cares the most. Like he wants all of these businesses and restaurants and families to do well and succeed. He's always like saying, oh, how's your relationship? I just saw like a, a video of him. He's talking to his restaurant owner and he's saying, okay, how's your relationship with your wife? How's it been affecting your relationship? And yeah, he's yelling and he's screaming at people, but he obviously has good intentions and he wants people to be happy and do well and be successful. And that's why, um, 
that's something that people see in you. Even if you get that feisty, um, it can come off very maybe harsh sometimes. People see that you're coming from a good place and that is attractive. They're like, okay, this person is just really letting it, it out there. So you know they'd probably be like a very passionate you know, lover or something like that. Nine of Cups I get in terms of sexiness. It's more about generosity or on the other hand, it just seems like you may be like a dream come true. Some people may view you as like a, a, a perfect like Ken doll or Barbie doll or something like that where you just seem very well put together, very much in place. I do see that for a lot of like Mars placements with the Emperor here representing Mars like I said before and a lot of the things that I've seen said about them is that they just come off seeming like they have like this fairy tale perfect life or they just look perfect like they're just seem like no hair out of place or something like that because mars energy really does um cater to physicality and perfecting the physical form so something about you just seems like just very well put together like a dream come true like people are just like is this person even real they don't seem like um disheveled they don't seem out of place they just seem like they they've got it like that but at the same time with this king of wands reverse and this two of cups reverse well, let's start with the King of Wands, and that represents more than likely that people are seeing a little bit more humility, or uh, like you don't come off arrogant in a way, like you don't come off like you're full of yourself. There's an element like your fire's like been dampered, so you're an incredible person, but they're just like, okay, this person's not like bragging all the time about how great they are or something like that. Even if you believe it, you always kind of see room for improvement and not only that but you may be more encouraging to others than you are yourself and people will really find that attractive about you and very sexy towards you and about you and then not only with the two of cups here when we get it upright, it's about people kind of getting along, having shared interest. You're not afraid to disagree, okay? It kind of goes back to that Emperor or Ace of Cups energy where you're really not afraid to disagree with someone and and you're not one to just play a passive role. People don't get passivity from you. They get a lot of um, fiery energy and that to them is really what's making you very, very attractive and very um, sexually enticing. As well as when we get this King of Wands reverse, it can almost seem a little bit effortless in terms of your sexuality, where it feels like to people, you're like, this person doesn't even have to try. This person isn't even trying to impress anyone. They're not trying to form um, relationships based off of things that may be superficial. They're not trying to cater to anyone's um, wishes. They're just kind of being themselves. And when that's happening, people just find you very, very sexy in that way. Also because we have a lot of kind of like fiery energy here with the emperor and the wands. We know there's something about the way that you move and the way that you maybe walk in a room, maybe have a certain walk um, that makes you very enticing. I say that because when I get a, a lot of wands or Mars like energy, it has to do with movement. I get it a lot for like cardio and stuff like that. So there's something about the way you maybe move your head. Maybe you have certain mannerisms that people find very, very attractive. Maybe like, oh, this person tilts their head this way. They talk with their hands. Um, they have a slight sway to their walk. They have a slight swagger in their step. Um, they have their shoulders back or something like that. It's some sort of motion that you do that really draws people in and it could possibly be eye contact with this cup energy because I do see cups representing um, very much like you know how people say the eyes are the window to the soul? So I get a lot of cups representing somebody having like an intense sort of eyes or gaze or just like a fierceness in which they want to, um, they engage with someone. They just have a very intense stare. And I think that stare can causally possibly cause people to sort of like look away. I think that's why we got this two of cup, cups reversed. Because I get that with somebody who's just like, oh, let me disengage from this person. You know how when you look at someone and they're just like, they might get really shy or they might get embarrassed because maybe you're 
very attractive. Or maybe this has happened to you where you've looked at someone attractive and they look back at you and you want to look away. That's what this Two of Cups reverse energy is giving me. So it's like this very intense glance or stare or presence that really brings about the, the sexiness and the aura for you. Something about the eyes, something about the way that you have um, very loose and kind of flirtatious mannerisms. And it's like you're being flirtatious without even trying. That's the main key word here. Now with Tim Pals, that kind of brings me back to this emperor like energy where you're like, um, you seem like above people or like regal. I don't know what, what it is, but something about the way you are and the way that you move through the world and communicate with people that people are like, oh my gosh, this person is just seems next level. Like this person is so intimidating. This person is so handsome. This person is so attractive. This person is so sexy. And it, it it's just because you... I guess you're, you must be very um, ambitious in some way and you must be somebody who's really on their grind and really um, focused and goal oriented and you must be somebody who really takes the time to decide what it is that you want in the long run and I think people think because you're someone who has that who really wants to focus on that foresight and really wants to focus on taking steps ahead and move in a direction in which you believe will make you happy and you're really trying to focus on that or at least maybe constantly evaluating and deciding that whatever it is they know that you're focused on the long run and you seem like the person with the plan okay so when you're a person who seems like you've got a plan and you really want to be a go-getter and you're decisive these are things that are very very sexy and very attractive okay and that is what people really find to be drawing them in to you uh in particular you're just a very very much attractive person with the Emperor, it's a lot of masculine energy here, especially with the 10th house. It's kind of known as a more like a masculine house as well because it's kind of seen as like the father, um, house of like the father or like um, at least an authority figure. I guess it doesn't have to be your father. It could just be an authority figure. But it's more of like an authoritative role. And when you have that sense of like leadership quality to you, that's really what's making you uh, very, very much an attractive person and your leadership is so interesting because you definitely take in advice of other people and you listen to other people and you don't act like this person who's like above everyone that's really emphasized here so that is what i have for you pile number four feel free to like comment and subscribe and don't forget you are just a sexy uh bunch of people okay so that is what i have and um you're very known for like the body that's and face like so i guess it's both you have both qualities but the face came up first, um, 100%. Something about being like this like perfect looking person. <laughs> that seems like very like unachievable. I don't know what it is, but that's what I have for, for you guys, okay? So, hey pal number five, let's get into why you are so sexy. We have the Knight of Pentacles, the Queen of Pentacles, the Queen of Swords. The King of Pentacles. Why do we have so many court cards? Um, <laughs> the Ten of Swords and the Sun Spirit. So, interesting. So many swords and so many pentacles. It just leads me to think that you just have this very much... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not conflicting. It's more so like you have two various different sides to you the side that wants to be very practical and down to earth as well as the side that wants to just go through with all these ideas and inspirations and thoughts that you have and it's it's hard to do that's why these um pinnacles and swords kind of conflict at times because every idea when you you know it's that it's that saying that like it's a good idea um, but it doesn't work in practice, you know what I mean? That's why we have that swords and pinnacles um, conflicting, elements conflicting, okay? Because sometimes when you have an idea, it doesn't always work out when you want to put it in practice. So they see you as somebody who has, has a lot of ideas and as somebody who is also very practical, but you're just trying to find that balance within yourself, and it's because that you have all of this knowledge and skill set that 
people find that sexy about you that you're just just take charge personality take charge of your own destiny take charge of who you want to be as well as you're very humble and you're not like a show off in terms of uh, your intelligence you're not like oh I'm a know-it-all and you're not like oh I got it like that um, so people like that about you that you come off very um, humble and that just seems sexy to them because it's obvious to them that you're very accomplished I mean we have two um, queens and a king here so you're, you are that person you are that person who is just radiating boss like energy okay and so having that sense of position of power or whether that's just being confident within yourself and who you are and knowing what you want or whether that's you literally being in a position of power or having a lot of influence maybe you have that within people in your life maybe you're a person who has a big social media following maybe you just have a general um respect within your community whatever it is people like that you have that sense of authority or confidence about you okay they also like that you will question yourself and that you will take the time to really really analyze your behavior it can also be very overly analytical with this ten of swords energy going on here but that's fine because people recognize that your intelligence is a part of what makes you sexy that's really emphasized with this deck more so than any other pal that i got in the reading for your intelligence or your ability to conversate your ability to form ideas your ability to be creative or your ability to really listen and consume and analyze information or be self-reflective is really attractive or just having that strong sense of self-awareness is what people really, really like about you. And then when we also have the Queen of Swords and the Ten of Swords, I also get it for like sort of um, sarcastic, deadpan humor or witty humor. So your sense of humor, especially with the Sun card here as well, is what's going to bring people into thinking that you are sexy the sun card for me i get that to represent people who have usually uh personality sometimes it's just their general sexiness but let me start with the personality this person may have a personality that is very humorous and likes to make people laugh and just makes them feel relaxed and makes them have like feel like they have they're having a good time and to take that burden or load off of people's shoulders and being very playful um and being very much like not taking things too seriously all the time, wanting to just hang out, play games, whatever. Your ability to do that, to just let go, is very, very attractive to people. Your ability to make fun of yourself, if you can make fun of yourself, if you're that type of person who makes fun of themselves, that's something that people will find very sexy about you. But I'm focusing a lot on the personality. Let's go into the physicality of this. With the Knight of Pentacles um, with and the Queen of Pentacles and the King of Pentacles, this I get for somebody who, if you aren't like very muscular, which pinnacles for me usually rules like muscles, then this will represent you being somebody who is very much a person who likes to focus on having a very pristine presentation. Like, I always get these cards, these pinnacle king and queens, to represent somebody who kind of looks like they got money, looks a little bit rich. They look bougie, okay? So that's something that's very attractive to you. You look like you take the time to look very luxurious or look very expensive, even if you aren't spending a lot of money, which you may not with this king of pinnacles reverse on what it is that you are putting on your body you look like you do you just look like a million bucks okay so they're like oh this person just looks expensive like that's just um sexy the way that they pay attention and take care of themselves and i definitely get the queen of pentacles as somebody who likes to eat healthy somebody who likes to take walks somebody who really likes to care for themselves they're like oh let me wash my hair let me make sure I don't have dirt under my nails let me make sure my nails aren't too long or let me um which what's, what's that thing when you pulse your feet and you like kind of scrub your feet girl I gotta do that right now like I, I'm probably after this reading when you like um scrub your feet and you make them nice and soft or whatever they're like oh I really like that you do that and you take care of your body in that way so having that self-care and really focusing on having a very 
nice image or having a very cared for image, that's something that's going to be very, very, very important. And I'm sorry if you guys can hear a lot of noise in the background. That is uh, my family just having a ball, okay? So, <laughs> um, that's something that's very um, sexy about you. And then when we have the Queen of Swords, we obviously have somebody who is going to be a little bit more mysterious, a little bit more standoffish. So people may like that about you, that you may have a little bit of a harder exterior, harder to get to know. It brings about a sense of mystery. The thing about the sun is how it connects to this Queen of Swords energy is if, you know, you get too close to the sun, you get burned. But the sun is very magnetic in a sense. So people will like that you can be a little bit hard to get to know, a little bit of a challenge, a little bit of somebody who they can't always put their finger on okay they can't pin you down quite so having that sense of mystery or having that sense of hey you know you can't touch me you can't see all my vulnerabilities you can't um you don't see all of my you know shadows you know all of that stuff that's something that people will really, really be drawn into because then they're like, okay, I wonder what this person's like when they're vulnerable. I wonder what things this person has gone through. I wonder what um, secrets they may have. Like, they really have that sense of curiosity about you. <laughs> Another thing that is really popping up with this reading is you may have very defined bone structure, and that's part of the sexiness to you, having that distinct very I don't know what's another word for having a more structured face I can't really think of another word right now but having that very defined facial figure or just general facial beauty is what's going to draw you in I've also seen the earth signs just have very like kind eyes or very like neutral eyes being like very approachable in a sense so people just find you very approachable and that's something that people will find very sexually alluring to them about you and then obviously with the sun card here i get this just for a traditional uh sexiness in terms of just any gender like <laughs> um really to be honest it's a lot of uh focus on having a very blatantly flirtatious or sexual image. I've seen a lot of sun rule people have like really great uh, bodies and stuff. And if they don't, then they're usually just kind of, especially in Vedic astrology, if they have the placement like Uttara Falguni for men and women, particularly black women, I've seen black women who have their moon placement in Uttara Falguni be very, very beautiful. They're like the traditional, um, beauty that you would expect like i think believe like stacy dash um i'm trying to think of people right now watch my main my brain just blank a bit but who is else um jada pickett smith uh i believe she has a tara falguni placement i'm trying to think of people so don't mind my brain just um Tika Sumpner, I think I say her name right. I'm pretty sure she might have her moon in Uttara Falguni. It might be different, but more than likely she does just based off how she looks. She looks very similar to other Uttara Falguni people that I've seen. But they have this very traditional, like, beauty that you would sort of expect. A lot of... Their eyes aren't very big, but they're very, like, magnetic. And they have usually, like, a, a larger forehead, but not super big very much like a very feminine roundish jawline i don't know how to explain it there it's just like very even overall in terms like everything's like medium size medium sized nose medium sized lips medium sized eyes like everything just looks kind of equal in a way but not venusian equal okay i don't know how to explain that like i i'm trying to give people in my mind that really emphasize that look Debbie Morgan, she has that sort of look. Gosh, let me see if I can think of a really good example. Now it's going to bother me that I can't think of anyone, even though this is like a super popular placement. Um, Christina Million, and you see how everything's kind of like more medium size. 
Some real people usually have smaller eyes than not, but you see how it's like a, a larger forehead, but then everything else is kind of like medium. Medium eyebrows, medium nose, medium lips, um, more roundish kind of feminine beauty, but then at the same time, very sensual, very sexual, and very seductive. Like, they don't hide the sexuality at all, okay? So, just having those, that sort of look and being very upfront with how you are expressing yourself, like having a low-cut top as a woman, maybe having like a shirtless thing going on as a guy, having very like um, usually like more flowy hair, sun rule people kind of like, uh, or things like that. They tend, yeah, they tend to like that more than you, more than anything. They'll, they'll pr prefer more flowy kind of hair or just like a more natural hair. I don't see too many with short haircuts at all. I'm focusing more on like a more neutral makeup look. Having more like a sun-kissed look, so a lot of bronzer that they'll wear. I've just noticed, because I watch a lot of sun rule people do makeup tutorials, and they'll focus more on like having a more bronzed look. They don't, well, depending on the sun rule placement. If it's like Kritika, they may do exaggerated makeup, but Uttara Falguni, not so much. More of a natural sort of look they'll go for. But that's what I'm pretty much talking about in terms of that beauty. So they just feel like you're somebody who's just like naturally beautiful. Even if you're not, then uh, I don't know. It, I, I don't know why you would think of yourself as not being naturally beautiful. I'm sure you are. But they see you more as a natural beauty, more connected to nature, was probably why we got all these earth elements around you. And they kind of feel like you really don't need to put in a lot of uh, you don't have to put a lot of effort into your look, but you do when you, when you want to. And it always looks good. Like, you just always kind of look good to people. So that's the thing that people will like about you and how, why they feel that you are so sexy, okay? And just having that very animated personality and being very much a people person is something that people will be drawn into you sexually from, okay? So that's something that I see here. But it's traditionally like, let me, you know, be seductive. Let me, let me show you how we have things in common. Let me wear this, you know, tight outfit. Let me be shirtless. Let me be flirtatious. Uh, let me kind of play this uh, white knight. Let me be this, um, upfront kind of flirtatious kind of person. So people will really like that. If you do that, then people will like that about you. But other than that, then this would indicate relying a lot more on like humor and wit and intelligence. So it can go either way, or maybe it's a combination of both. So that is what I have for you, pal. Number five, if you like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram at astro underscore tarot research. I'm trying to think of they known for anything else. They're, they're known for, like, abs sometimes, sun rule people. I've seen them have, like, incredible abs. But, like, other than that, I can't think of anything. But Oh, and um, the, the buttocks area. That's something that could be um, drawing people in if you're a woman or a guy, whatever. Um, the, the buttocks area is something that people will be like, oh, that I like that. Okay, so that's what I have for you, pal number five. And I hope to see you next time. Au revoir.